morning, class. Welcome to the alley. Welcome to your theatre. I'm going to tell you a story that involves a biscuit tin, a bunch of letters, a guy from Artie Garvin. What's wrong with Artie Garvin? A guy from Langenreichen in southern Germany, and another guy who was Austrian. He had issues, he had problems. But, all in good time. We will begin and introduce the people in our story. Robert Pollock. Bobby was in the Royal Linskill Fusiliers. That's the day that he joined up. This is Bobby wearing his old bill cap. That's the style of hat that he wore. And he's a sergeant now. Those are the stripes that show that he's a sergeant. He's gone up in the world. So that's the first guy we're talking about, Bobby. What's his name? Now this joker, you give him his proper type, see up here? That's who we're talking about. Infantile Reich, Sal. Do you like my German? That was the name of the person, Joseph Sal. Well, it turns out Joseph Sal was a German soldier who was captured by Bobby. Bobby captured him, took a book of him, and it ended up in Artie Garvin. But I went checking about it, and I found it. And there he is. And that photograph was taken when Joseph joined up the German army in the First World War. There was a third guy, wasn't there? Keep your eyes on him. That was the guy as well on the day that war was declared in Germany. That's him in Munich. He is thrilled that war is coming. And you know what the sad thing is? He wasn't even German. Enlist today. Oh, that's the bit that the one to tell me. The real one. To get at you. Daddy, what did you do in the Great War? I stayed at home. I mean, there was less chance of me getting killed there. One Irishman defeats ten Germans. And that's a true story. Michael O'Leary won the Victoria Cross. The highest medal for gallantry you can win. When you went to the Western Front, you fought in the trenches. You have a fair idea what the trenches were like? Yeah. You're not even close. You spent maybe two weeks at a time in this slit in the ground, and that's where you fought, that's where you slept, that's where you ate, that's where you went to the toilet. This is a pickle helmet. This is a ceremonial German helmet. It's made of leather, pressed leather, spike on the top. This is what the average German soldier wore. The British Army had this. This is called the old bill cap. It's made of wool. It's thick, it's heavy. You sweat like mad with it. It's horrible. And there's absolutely no protection against bullets or bombs. It's called the Stahlhelm. The Mark 1916 steel helmet was also used for cooking and it was used as a toilet. This is the British Army helmet. This is called a Brody. Now, it's a good helmet for protecting stuff. More people were killed with debris falling on top of them almost as much as people that were shot. So you start to see that life in the trenches wasn't all wonderful. You had different enemies, you had different things that you that life made life horrible. You were permanently cold, you were permanently wet. A lot of the trenches, you were up to your knees in water, day and night. Never mind the fact that 30 yards away, there were people who desperately wanted to kill you. And then they had their enemies. Do you see the trench here? Yeah. That is a dead person. This is almost exactly the size of a trench rat. Rats had an endless supply of food, but there was one other thing that these loved to eat. There was an endless supply of human bodies. And rats ate them. What were the tools of the trade on the Western Front? How did you go to war? This is a short magazine, Lee Enfield Rifle, British. You could kill somebody over a thousand yards away. The British Army soldiers became that well trained with it. The 
Germans actually thought they were being fired on by machine guns at one point. There's also this thing, the bayonet. Soldiers hate them because if you stab someone, it's hard to get the thing out again because it's stuck. It's just a pull. Both these rifles are real. Both these rifles were used in World War I. And the thing that I often ask myself is, did they actually kill anybody? This is a Webley Mark VI. Officers carried it for a very, very special reason. Well, for a reason, if they were in a trench and they were attacked, they had this. It was the first day of the Battle of the Somme. So for one week before this day, the British artillery, the British cannons, fired 1.5 million shells, explosive shells, at the German lines. Because the Germans had been there for two years, and they had built these trenches and these dugouts that were up to 30 feet deep. They heard the whistles going, and Bobby Pollock and his friends got out of the trenches, and they started to march up the hill towards a place called the Schwabe. Bobby was captured by the German army in 1918. In being captured, he was stabbed in the leg with a butcher blade. <coughs> Blood poisoning set in, and Bobby was killed. So, this, to bring the story completely back, Mrs. Pollock just loved her son so much that she kept all his letters, and kept them in this biscuit tin, and kept them in the attic, and then she died, and then the family died out. There's a few of them left about yet, but there's nobody in the garden of that name. So Bobby Pollock hasn't been spoken about in 94 years. But you remember him now. You've seen what he looks like. There is his grave. There's so many graves. This is a cemetery called Tyne Cot in Belgium. It has 11,000 graves in it. 11,000. Now, I want to end with a story about saving a life. This man here is a Sergeant Tandy. Later on, Tandy became a war hero. He won the Victoria Cross, and his regiment painted a portrait of him, helping him. And the picture went all around the world. Everybody recognized this picture. And in Germany, this man, this little corporal, recognized him and said, he saved my life. So 20 years later, the Prime Minister, Her Majesty, His Majesty's Prime Minister of the Commonwealth, Neville Chamberlain, was visiting Germany. And he met the German soldier. And the German soldier had become rich and powerful. He says, I've always promised I'll go back to France. But I will never forget the bravery and the mercy shown to me by one of your soldiers. I want you when you go back to your country, to say that I remember what he did. And the reason that I'm alive today is because of him. The man was as good as his word. 22 years later, he did go back to France. And his name was Adolf Hitler. Thanks very much. Good luck, you.